Hey folks, Brian here. Today I wanted to show you something I fixed with 3D printing. And what you see in front of you is a hand blender by Braun. And it comes with multiple attachments, this being one of them. And let's see if it works. There's a piece inside that connects the attachments to the black motor. And when my friend brought it to me, it was actually cracked in half. So I went to Tinkercad and designed a replacement and then graduated into Onshape to design and replace that part that you can see there. And what I did was just use a caliper that I got and measured the various dimensions and printed it out. And using Onshape I was able to slowly hone all the measurements, all the dimensions until it fit exactly the way it should which is quite tight on this side so that when you pull it out it remains in the attachment and loose in this side so that it will come out. So let me show you how I did it in Tinkercad and then why I went on to Onshape and successfully fix this blender. First I started in Tinkercad and I used a lot of basic shapes and combined them together to create the new part. Tinkercad is very simple. You've either got a solid shape or a hole and the holes clearly make holes. So here I have everything put together as one, but if I ungroup, you can see all the various uh, basic shapes that I put together, including boxes for these side fins and roofs to make the uh, triangular parts at the top. And then a lot of cylinders form the main shaft. And those are just all added together. And finally, I cre created a cone to create this angle here. Finally, I created one more box, but changed it from a solid into a hole so that there was a hole in the bottom that would fit into the blender attachment. And once you group them together, you can see that the hole creates something, excavates the piece here. It turned out pretty well, but I realized that if I wanted to make these roofs slanted, it was going to be a little bit difficult and I'm not aware of modifying shapes by various points so I realized maybe I needed something more powerful and I decided well I want to learn something new in the video I'm going to try on shape and that's where I went from here learning on shape took a couple days it was pretty frustrating actually but once I realized how powerful the system was I realized that this was the right thing to do and definitely something I'll use in the future. But first I really had to wrap my head around the fact that everything starts with sketches. And sketches are primitive shapes like lines, circles, and rectangles. They're more of a um, kind of like a specification that you then apply various modifiers like extruding to create actual physical parts then you can apply additional modifiers to parts to combine them or subtract them to create holes. So here you can see that I applied various modifiers to slowly build up the vertical column of the shape. And what's really interesting about Onshape is on the left here, the features dialog shows sort of a timeline of your sketches and modifiers. And even though I finished the part and I showed it to you just now, I could go anywhere into this timeline and change a dimension, a constraint. And that will actually ripple through the entire sequence of features. And as you can see, I, by changing that to three, these fins now poke out. And all the unioning and rotating of these individual shapes still works after that. So now I could go back 
and change that figure again, reprint it, and see if it works. This made it very easy to iterate and make sure it works with the Blender. And one thing I wanted to do was make it so that if I print it in high quality on the Lulzbot Mini, which creates a pretty thick uh, layer, initial layer, that I could still just take it right off the bed and put it on the hand blender. So that's why I made this hole a little bigger on the bottom. And I could quickly adjust that hole and try different ones until it worked well, straight off the bed. So that's why I think it's worth investing in Odd Shape. It's free, just like Tinkercad. And once you really need to make something um, very uh, fine and with certain dimensions, you can really tweak it until it works right off the bed. So after this, I just printed out about 10 of these for my friend. And hopefully at any time, if he needs more, we can just keep printing them out. Thanks for watching. What follows after this is a little 3D printing montage. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. See you later. I'm happy that 3D printing actually fixed something useful. All right. Bye.